Hello and welcome to another Tabletop Games Blog Saturday review. The seasons began again. We are to build our rice paddies, fill them with water, plough them with our buffaloes, plant our rice and wait for it to grow. We are to be clever about how we divide the land to make the best use of the most fertile soil. We also had to have enough help to get the harvest in, but overall we had to be patient and wait for the end of the Seasons of Rice by Button Shy. It's the first wallet game I've ever played, but I already knew that Button Shy's series of 18 card games was going to be something special. Games that come in a small form factor are pretty much always of special interest to me. In particular, they come with very limited components, in this case just 18 cards and a rulebook. It's always exciting to see how much game can fit into these very tight restrictions and how hard every component was made to work. In the case of Seasons of Rice, every card is different and both sides perform a different function. The paddy field side shows the edges of fields as well as either rice farmers, buffaloes, farmhouses, trees or a combination of them all, while the other side shows an ancestor, which is basically another and unique way of scoring additional points as well as having a point track along two edges. You do need to provide your own tokens to keep score, but small coins, paper clips or even matchsticks all work well. Of course, you can keep score on your smartphone if you prefer. What makes the game so interesting are two things. First of all, the game consists of two phases. During the first you choose two cards from your hand, one to play, the other to go into a card offer row, and then pass your hand to the other player. It's a classic form of card drafting we all know, in the second phase, players take turns and choose one of the cards that were put into the offer row in phase 1. It's a lovely way of using these quite simple mechanisms in an interesting way. It's never easy to decide which card to play into your paddy field and which to put out for the next phase. You almost want to keep them all, or at least you don't necessarily want cards to be accessible by the other player. You do have to sort of plan ahead a little and hope that the cards you put out in phase 1 will still be there for you in phase 2. The other part that makes Seasons of Rise so interesting and fun is how you play cards. It's a bit hard to describe, but you can play cards in portrait or landscape mode, and you have to line them up edge to edge. So if you place a portrait card next to one you played in landscape orientation, only half the edge of one will be lined up with the other card. Also, you need to ensure that the paddy field boundaries are lined up with each other when you play cards. The thing is, boundaries are actually printed on the card diagonally creating a sort of isometric view of your paddy fields, which looks lovely, but does mess with your head a bit. You're constantly trying to rotate your card 45 degrees to make the boundaries look straight. However, once you've played a few rounds, it gets easier. The main aim of the game is to create fully enclosed paddy fields, that is, fields that have a boundary around them on all sides, while at the same time trying to make the fields as large as possible. You also want to get rice farmers, buffaloes and houses into your enclosed fields too, if possible, to get even more points. It's a bit like playing Carcassonne, except that there are only 18 cards, two of which are your ancestors, which give you additional ways of scoring, leaving 16, only 8 of which will make up your paddy fields. So you do have to work quite hard to create lots of paddy fields with only 8 cards. The game is over very quickly, but you do want to play it again and again. It's actually quite thinky because of the limited amount of cards that you have to play, but not too taxing to tire you out. It's actually an ideal game to play while you're out and about. It does use up a fair amount of table space, but if you're in a pub or restaurant, you should have enough room. It also plays quickly enough, so it can be played while you're waiting for your food to arrive. If you want a two-player game that you can easily take with you, then Seasons of Rice is definitely worth checking out. Thank you for listening to this Tabletop Games Blog Saturday Review Podcast. Please check the description below for links mentioned in this episode as well as to the written version of this article on the blog. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, give us some stars or leave a review. Please also tell your friends about me and if you want to offer financial support, check out my Patreon Ko-fi pages, links to which you'll find in the blog at tabletopgamesblog.com. So thank you again for listening and I hope to see you again soon. This podcast was made possible by the generous help of my Patreon supporters. Royal Patron Sean Newman, Castle Guard David Miller, Dice Masters Alex Bardi, Paul Grogan, Robin Kay and James Naylor, and Shining Lights Sarah Reed, Tim Vernick and Winnet Wizards.